What's up guys? It's Mr. Drury here in downtown Houston, Texas. Welcome to my home. Welcome to my home. Pretty excited. This is the first video assignment in regards to remote teaching. Uh, and we're covering buzz rolls today. So I think that that's uh, one of the most important topics. Uh, it makes sense that we start with this when we talk about snare drum, in my opinion. Uh, buzz rolls is probably, in regards to snare drumming, in my opinion, one of the most important concepts if not the most important concept um, from a sound quality perspective that students struggle with when they come to me. Um, so hopefully we'll dig in and we'll get some good knowledge shared with you guys. Okay, so common problem number one when kids come to me is that they'll initiate the buzz roll from the wrist, right? And this is what I hear. And when, when I, and I know that they're using the wrist, this is exactly what I hear. Right? So let's talk about that sound quality, right? So if I'm initiating buzz from the wrist, I'm putting a lot of excessive pressure here at the beat of the stick. So what that means is when I get, when I do a buzz roll, I hear it's very articulated. Um, and because I'm putting a lot of pressure here at the bead, I'm not letting the stick rebound to its fullest potential. So not only am I going to hear articulation at the beginning of the buzz roll, it's oftentimes going to sound compressed, right? So what we want to do is we actually want to try and initiate the buzz roll from the forearm, okay? And this is the sound difference, okay? So this is a buzz roll initiate, initiated from the wrist. Buzz roll initiated from the forearm. So that sounds completely different, right? When we use the, the forearm, the sound of the buzz roll is lengthened, right? right? We hear a lot more um, length of sound per stroke, which is what we ultimately want when we try and do a buzz roll, okay? The next thing that I see with students coming in is back three fingers on the stick, back three fingers off the stick, right? So listen to it if all three fingers are on the stick, even though I'm using my forearm. Right? So that's a terrible sound quality, right? We don't want that, right? There was no length associated with the sound. I'm choking the stick, right? So we want to try and have our back three fingers off the stick. And this is tricky, right? Listen to what it sounds like if my just my pinkies are on the stick, okay? Right? So that's just my pinkies, right? It's harmless, it's just a pinky, right? No, it sounds pretty similar to when I was just using my wrist, right? I'm keeping the stick from moving as freely as possible. So when you do your buzz roll, you want it coming from the forearm, and we want back three fingers off the stick. So we'll take a listen to that. Right, lots of length with that, okay? Next, tight versus loose fulcrum. So listen to a buzz roll if I have a tight fulcrum. Listen to it if I have a loose fulcrum or a relaxed fulcrum. Let's use the word relaxed, not loose. Right? There's a little bit more freedom with that. So let's talk about the difference, okay? So again, let, just to review, this is a tight fulcrum. And this is a relaxed fulcrum. Okay? So the tight fulcrum has a little bit more front to the sound. It's a little bit more articulate. Um, and maybe you can hear this, maybe you can't, but the tight fulcrum actually doesn't allow the stick to rebound as fully as it can, right? A buzz roll is also called a multiple bounce roll, right? And whenever I'm applying pressure or squeezing, I am inhibiting the stick from bouncing multiple times or as many multiple times as it could. Right? So we want to actually have as relaxed of a fulcrum as we can. Now, pause. If I'm playing something at like quarter note equals 180, like if I'm playing a snare part to a Corigliano piece, um, or there are certain Tekeli pieces um, in wind ensemble that are like quarter note equals 180, or John Mackey, you know, some of those really exciting uh, beat pieces, right? 
Um, I'm probably going to be putting a lot of pressure on the stick if it's like a quarter note equals 180, right? So there's, you know, some wiggle room in regards to that. But I think a good rule of thumb is just to try and keep yourself as relaxed as possible. So if I'm playing a Sousa March at 120, I'm not going to be having to squeeze a stick, right? It's a lot more relaxed if I'm playing something at um, an andante tempo, right? There's going to be some breath to that, right? I'm not going to have to be squeezing the stick, right? So just use your good judgment with that. But a good rule of thumb is I want my fulcrum to be as relaxed as I can when doing a buzz roll, okay? To recap, buzz roll is coming from the forearm. We're going to keep our back three fingers off the stick and we're going to keep our fulcrum as relaxed as possible, okay? Next is bead height, okay? So a big problem with students when they come to me is that they'll do a buzz roll and there's a common misconception. Okay, they'll do a good forte buzz roll for me and the height uh, their beads is going to be like two or th three inches away from the head of the drum. And what happens is, is I hear every single contact sound, every single note. So when it sounds like this, it's going to be really, really loud. So go ahead and take the volume and do it down a couple notches. Right? You hear every single note. Right? That's not pleasant. Right? So when I do a forte buzz roll, I'm actually thinking of like a one inch punch, right? My bead of my stick is, I do my best to try and keep it at, 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 at least a half an inch, okay? So this is what it would look like. Right? So you hear way less contact sound. You don't hear the strokes, right? So what this means is when you do a buzz roll, it's preferable to keep your bead of your stick as close to the drum as you can, okay? So, um, and if I'm doing a piano buzz roll, it makes sense that I want to keep that, that bead millimeters from the drum head, right? Listen, I mean option A. This is option A, okay? So that's, I'm trying to do a piano buzz roll. The B is coming up an inch from the drum head, and it's very articulate, right? You can hear every single stroke, right? But if I lower the height of the B and get that B as close to the head of the drum as I can, it drastically improves the sound of the buzz roll. Right? If I was in a concert hall and you were sitting in the audience and there was a lot of good sound reverberation and it was a good acoustically sound concert hall, there's no way that you'd be able to hear the, the strokes in that, right? So again, to recap, buzz roll is coming from the forearm. We want to keep our back three fingers off the stick. We want as relaxed of a fulcrum as the tempo will allow. And we want to keep our beads of the drum, uh, of the stick close to the drum head as we possibly can. Okay, so that's my spiel on buzz rolls and the elements that can make it sound good or not so good, right? And if it doesn't sound good, how you can fix it at home, right? To make your buzz roll better because that's very important, right? When we play drums, it's side tangent, right? Percussion gets a bad rep because it's such an accessible instrument, right? So, you know, Mr. Dre comes up and plays a butt, uh, and plays a stroke on the drum. It sounds like this, right? You come up to the drum and you play a stroke and it sounds like that, right? If your math teacher comes up and plays your drum, it sounds like this. Your mom, your brother, your puppy, a monkey, a orangutan, spatula, right? So all that to say, it's easy to make sounds on these instruments. You put an oboe in front of me and I don't know how many records Right. I have no clue, right? But there is a level of accessibility to this, right? Which means we as musicians, we as percussionists, have to be so picky on the sounds that we create out of our instrument, right? So when you're practicing this at home, please, please, please be picky, right? So now let's fast forward. How can you practice this at home, okay? So I'm going to share with you the technique that my professor at UT, uh, Professor Tony Edwards, he's the principal timpanist at the Austin Symphony Orchestra, 
He studied at Temple University with the Alan Abel. He is a beyond brilliant instructor and he drastically improved my snare drumming exponentially and completely changed with how I approach um, playing the buzz roll, right? Because when I came to UT, my buzz roll was very tight. It was very compressed. I played with a lot of tension in my sound, probably because I was very riddled with A-type anxiety, right? But he, we did a good job of like just not staying all that away, right? And we used this technique, okay? And how we're going to approach this is we're going to actually start at a triple piano dynamic or as soft of a dynamic buzz roll as you can, right? Uh, and the biggest reason for that is because it forces you to keep the beat of the stick as close as you can to the drum, right? And I, in my opinion, it's easier to create a buzz roll sound where students have more successful time creating a buzz roll with good sound quality at a soft dynamic than they do at a loud dynamic. It's more controllable. It's more contained. They can achieve it, right? If a fifth and sixth grader comes to me and they have little tiny hands, they're going to really struggle with doing a buzz roll <laughs> at forte dynamic. So I like starting at triple piano dynamic. I find that students in general have more successful time doing that, okay? So this is how I want you to approach it, okay? You're going to try and start with each hand individually, and you're going to try and get as much sound out of each stroke as you can as soft as you can, and this is what it sounds like. Guys, the beat of my drum head, I mean, my drumstick, is maybe a centimeter from the drum head. You know, so it's, I'm keeping my stick extremely low to the drum. We don't want this sound, right? Right, do we hear the cha 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 at the beginning of that? And we want a buzz roll, right? We want this purr. And get picky, guys. I'm a lefty, right? My right hand doesn't sound near as good as my left hand. So in my individual practice time, you better believe it, I'm gonna be like this. Nope, terrible. Not long enough. Ah. Ah. Right? And I'm gonna be struggling that I'm gonna try and get my right hand to the level of clarity that, or the level of sound quality that my left hand can achieve. Just because I'm a lefty, right? So I'm gonna spend more time working on my right hand. Okay? So, once you feel like you get pretty good at that, like you're doing this, oops, choke back on the stick just a little bit. Right? Once you feel like you're pretty good at that, and you're getting some pretty decent length out of each one of your strokes, the next thing you're gonna do is try to overlap the sound, okay? To where the sound doesn't stop, but I'm not playing fast. How slow can I do this, right? How slow can I make my strokes, right? But still get length out of each of the strokes and the sounds overlap. And this is really, really hard. Oh, that was terrible. Good, we're resuming. Good. I had 20% battery power left on my phone <laughs> and it popped up and I was just like, oh no, do I have to start over again? Um, no, we're good. So, we're going to try and overlap. And when we 
you get pretty good at that one. You feel like you're pretty good at that. You can speed up ever so slightly. While still keeping it very soft. And take it, listen to this guys. That's my roll bass, right? That's the rhythm. Super slow, right? And here's what you're gonna do. Once you finally get that pretty comfy, you're gonna hold it. Or try and hold it for a minute. Hold it for a minute, this is what you're going to do. You know what I did? I went up approximately a half dynamic. Oops. What happens when you try and talk to play? I'm going to hold that for a minute. And then guess what you're going to do? as you can, okay? And this should take a long time. Guys, the first time you do this, you should not be getting to forte, right? You should not be getting, you should be getting to maybe piano before your little army arms poop out, right? And if you're fifth and sixth grade and you haven't quite developed muscle strength yet, maybe you don't even get to um, doing um, a full-fledged buzz roll, right, on day one. And that's okay, right? It's like yoga. I love yoga. Yoga's about practicing come as you are, right? Right? So it's all about where you are in this process, this journey of percussion playing, right? So some people, you can get up to mezzo piano, day one. Good for you, good for you. Record it, send it to me. Make sure that's good sound quality, right? Some of you are doing good just to get your right hand with good sound quality. Right? But guess what? Here's the key to that sentence. Good sound quality. And good sound quality trumps quantity any day. Quality over quantity, okay? So be patient with yourself, okay? And know that the expectation is, is it's, um, it's whatever you're most comfortable with doing, wherever it is you are, and the goal that it is that you want to achieve, right? We all come at different levels, okay? Awesome. So, that's my spiel on buzz roll. Uh, I look forward to uh, the next video assignment. Take care and go Grand Oaks. Woo!